Hi, this is Hank. He said to mute Michael. <laughs> My WebEx in... It's been, ages, it's been ages since we talked. Yeah, I, I, I had the same feeling. Thank you, likewise. My, my WebEx, in this disbelief, told me, well, you're not connected to the audio. Yeah, so uh, connect. These are your connection options. Dial in. No, no, connect to the computer. Are you sure you want to? Yes, I want to get. Why is this so unusual for you? <laughs> I had to like do three or four clicks to connect my computer audio. Ooh, very obstruse. And it's still showing me a call in window. I don't know why. Yeah, all of last week or the week before when I was connecting to WebExes, I was connected and yet a little thing saying I'm connecting would continue to do its thing. It would just Oh yeah, you told us. Yeah. Uh, and still of course, uh you know, I have a public IP a public V4 on my desktop, right? Cuz I have I have 16 public IPs in my home. And uh, um anyway, if I don't nat nat the WebEx destinations, it won't work because their turn server is broken. And of course, it doesn't work with V6 at all. I use uh, public IP v V4 addresses um, at my uh, institute site and it works fine. Are you sure? I am very sure. Right I now? Okay, well, I, 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 could, I could turn it off and try again. But, but back in the spring when I had this problem, Karsten connected to, um, to Bremen. Yes, uh, uh, just a moment, Hank. Uh, hmm? Sorry, uh, I, I have a, a, a parallel meeting uh, request uh, <laughs> with Hannes, uh, but I'm joining them at the top of the hour. I just wanted to make sure that the, you know, it was actually going to work before uh, they're going to have their other M to M meeting right now. Um, there. So I just suddenly had Hannes in my ear and I couldn't figure out why for a moment. <laughs> service. Hannes as a service. Be good April Fool's RFC. John Clemson as a service. You need a press to listen or something. Yeah, that's right. But wouldn't that be good April Fool's RFC? John Clemson as a service. I would need more context for this. I am illiterate, apparently. Uh, well, okay. So John Clemson is a IETF old old timer. Ah, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I miss uh, the, the pronunciation and written word is difficult sometimes for me. Uh, and anyway, so he's always known for his very narrow column, like fifty character wide messages that go on for pages. Um, and he almost always has a really good point, uh, but like Mark Twain, he didn't have time to make it shorter. Thomas. Sati. Yes, I have an attendance list that I keep. We have one Thomas. One Thomas. So we have seven participants and I counted to seven. Okay, that's good. That's a good means that I counted people properly. Because you cannot copy and paste from the participants window. <laughs> Which is yeah. annoying. Good, and yesterday I found I found during the ASDF virtual intro, it was impossible to copy and paste from the chat. I couldn't do it. It was ridiculous. I don't know why. Um, hello all. Um, so I've been share I'm sharing the uh, uh, issue list, which has gotten larger, thanks to Thomas and Hank. There's some sarcasm in that. Thank you. I think. Um, <laughs> um so something we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go through and we're going to have to each of us are going to have to take one or two issues and just figure out 
um, what is the meaning of the issue. And if we, you know, even if it is a yes, no, some of them may just be no. Since we have Thomas on the call, um, I'm going to suggest that we go through the issues that you open, Thomas. And uh, okay. we also had, I think that's what we did last time, um, Dave. I think, what do we do in the 15 minutes after you, we worked on some issue that um, was Thomas. Oh, good. You have some other issues here from Dave from 10 minutes ago. So let's start with those, okay? Um, and then we'll get to this issue here. Um, and then we'll come back, or this pull request here, and then we'll come back to um, issues and maybe we can pu pull some other text there. I'm happy to uh, write solutions live as we go, um, but I can't kind of write them on my own without uh, getting, I don't say, into trouble uh, there. So, Dave, uh, let's talk about this first. I, I pulled uh, two low-hanging fruit. It might be useful to see what the issue was uh, first. Okay. You can verify what it's addressed. So. There we go. Fixes two. I tried to pick ones that were not filed by Thomas since Thomas was working on stuff for his. So here we go. I'm just going to um, make the window a bit wider, I think will be better. Yep. So I don't remember who this one was from, but you can see the underlying phrase. It's a guy. There. It's a guy. To, uh, guy. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So you can see freshness is a key component is the fourth line that he underlines there. And that's the phrase. I think what you mean is that some flexibility on the requirement for freshness is the key component i.e. it's the willingness to accept a result that's been around for a while enables caching. Ned agrees, and so I tried to incorporate roughly that words in the pull request. Works for me. Yeah, we were also working on some content that had some uh, that requires some flexibility with freshness, so to speak. So uh, I think that's actually uh, very fitting. Yeah. Okay, let's do that then. Yeah, go ahead and delete branch. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Uh, this one. And check the issue number, and I believe this one was filed by Ned. And his main point is the grammar seems off to me. Um, although you can see in the because, for example, if you look at um, things like a dedicated chip, a te or such with no commas in it in the second line there in the quote. Um, no, if you look at the, the the part in the first paragraph. Look at the second line, a dedicated chip, a TEE or such, and so on with no commas. So that's an example of something that's kind of off. Um, yeah. But you can see in his bullet list, he adds, after TE, a virtual machine, and he replaces or such with a secure mode of operation. Okay, And, and then, or other forms of domain isolation and so on. Um, and so here, I did not incorporate his wording exactly, and so I was hoping he was going to be on so we could compare and see if my take at that wording. I also changed a win to an if. Uh, there's what is coming from. Yeah, in the few minutes I saw this, I was not able to uh, understand the provenance of the text. I was like, okay, this is too far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I get it. So I added line breaks since I was changing it enough anyway, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be easy to tell. Um, the line 1173, one, that text is unchanged starting from 1173. One, that's the line, that's the second half of the red text. The first half of the red text is replaced with a uh, line breaks, and you can see I've added a virtual machine or other secure mode of operation, and I flipped the order of uh, things such that I broke it into multiple sentences to, so it wouldn't read as a run-on sentence. So please read and comment. I also changed, you'll notice I also changed the phrasing to be about, previously it was about the attester located in an envir isolated environment. And I yeah. rephrased it to be about a testing environment and target environment. So hopefully I didn't break it, but. So I, I uh, so, so there's an implicit um, threat here that the target environment tries to create, uh, generate evidence. That's a assumption coming out of the blue, I think a little bit, it, well, because it's not tasked to do so. 
go back to Ned's text for a second here. Uh, Meaning Ned, Ned, the, the issue. You can see um, in his, um, I'm going to read his last sentence at the bottom of his quote here. Additionally, the attester formats collected claims and integrity protects them with an attestation key that is also domain isolated such that the target environment or some other entity other than the attester is not able to undermine the attester's protections. Okay. So that was his main point here, and I tried to work yeah. with that. Yeah, so, okay, uh, so what, what I would read from that uh, with your text is that the target environment could have an effect on the attesting environment such as that uh, lies about the target uh, uh, environment become possible. Um, and if the target environment never create evidence in the first place, it would be uh, hard to believe that it does now uh, suddenly without uh, yeah. layered attestation such, so that's weird, I guess. And, and I'm going to read the sentence right above that, just in case you like Ned's phrasing better than mine, right? Where the target yeah, environment know. cannot lie or interfere with the claims collection function. Right? That's an interesting phrasing there. I don't know if people like that better, but... Uh... No, that is not better. Yeah, so that's why I why? went to it. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, I see it. I can see what you did there now. Um, hmm. so I always used to ask the question whether or not you could forge your own signature. <laughs> and and it's interesting because... No. That, no, but interesting because writing your signature is actually called forging your signature. You act, That's actually what the verb oh, means, see. right? So the point is that it has two terms in English because it means to physically yeah. make the signature is to forge your signature. But yeah. if it's not your signature, as in, you know, I forged a sword out of metal or something, right? That's exactly right. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> wait, OK. But yeah, so that's the point. And it's very much is, you know, can't, you, you can't actually forge evidence about yourself. It's never actually a lie because it's whatever you believe. <laughs> right. Anyway, your your phrasing is just fine. I thought you might have intended to go and make this a point, a point uh, list, but I'm happy with it as commas, and I'm also happy with your Oxford comma well, here. So I, I took <laughs> it as uh, as Ned was suggesting bullets because he left yes. it as one great big long sentence. Once I split the first part from the second, once I split it into two sentences, I didn't think a bulleted list was necessary. That I'm 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 happy with this. Any objections to this? I can live with the uh, uh, forged evidence. <laughs> Meaning, if you don't have a better phrasing, right? So uh, I'm happy to accept better phrasings, but uh, I, th I thought this was slightly better than Ned's wording, which I thought was a good start. So, okay. So, oh, oops, pull requests. Okay, Thomas. So there was one objection in this from Dave already, and I think oh. I agreed to it. I agreed with your objection or well, Hank had the most comments. I only had oh. one. Uh, I figure we just discussed it on the call here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I thought it was, I thought. Net, the files, oh, sorry, Hank's comments. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and version of information of the hardware. That is certainly very awkward. Yeah, this, uh, this, this, this I think Thomas is right on this one. Yeah, I think Thomas is right on this one. Meaning, I, yeah, I agree it's a change in meaning. I think Thomas's change is probably what was originally intended. Okay, I wanted to make sure of that because but, uh, it literally says that information now has versions. <laughs> it can be outdated information and yeah. new information. No, I, and, yeah, and, I agree. And that's not a point. Okay. This this came from the use cases document, and so it was probably uh, wordsmithing on some language that Michael, you probably originally authored. But uh, yeah, yeah. So even though it's not, it changes the meaning. That's actually something we're saying is a good thing. Okay, so let's just resolve this. Oh, oh that was get that wrong. Uh, there was an undo at one point. Uh, that yeah, was the yeah. present versus running, and I saw this when Thomas originally brought it up, and I agreed with that. Let me so. click this resolve, and then we have present versus yeah. running. Okay, so sorry. Yeah. So and here I understand, uh, Thomas, your main point was. Software runs. Hardware is the thing that is uh, the, the environment that the software is running in, and so present is more accurate. And I agree with your argument. Okay, so we agree. We agree with this change. That's I think what I said. So that is still resolved, is what we're saying. 
uh, I uh, I'm okay with present, which I think is a one won't have in any case, but it was changing meaning on a, on a very subtle and runtime integrity, boot time integrity, uh, uh, verify then uh, then start or, or, or having a process here. So that's just a subtle bad uh, pitfall here. But if you're okay with present, I'm happy. That's actually well, the, the firmware. Thing. The other reason I, that I like speak. present better is because you could, in fact, sign it software, you know, measure software that is not yet running meaning it's just present on disk and kind of a load on demand you can sign it as part of the evidence generation process and it isn't running until much later and this allows for that to be the case it's whether you do that or not it isn't not important but i think it's more flexible i think it's also more to the truth how things things are conducted so yes yeah and and hardware isn't running it's present so right, so right. you'll mm -hmm. be saying it's there and you may be yeah so okay so we're all okay i think with that at this point uh didn't ira highlight Yeah, I'm not picking on on content changes where this is editorial, so I was just uh, careful. Yeah, hey, and hey, what you're is the change here other than the text comma? Text. What is the change here other than? Because it expands at line two hundred two, is responsible yeah. for admission of the device into the network, and then okay. Hank Hank modified the the previous text that was a network inter infrastructure device with network equipment, which sounds better to me. But, sure, uh, sure. I, I think both changes are fine with me. Both Hanks and Thomas's. Um, it did not put in Hank's change. Well, wow. it mm. still says a network infrastructure device instead of network equipment. Hmm. Didn't I do that right? Um, I'm going to hit reload in a second. Just to, okay. There's two commits. There's the update. There's the files changed. Come on. About hardware and software. Okay, now it's got it. Now it's there. It's okay. It's, yeah. Okay, so resolve that. Next, an assessment of system state. Thomas's text looks fine to me. I changed one word and explained why, but otherwise, Thomas, your text looks fine to me. Um, okay, works for me. Yeah. Thanks. And for a non-native speaker, this is very hard to learn. I'm still learning. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you want the short version, I can explain what Chicago Manual Style says, but and why the IRC editor changes it. But uh, I got annoyed at uh, the IRC editor keeping changing the documents that I was writing, and so I looked it up and tried to learn it myself so that they would stop changing my stuff. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. What I heard is that the RFC editor successfully outsourced the job to you. Yeah, that's basically right. <laughs> <laughs> At least for my doc, so. Uh, other examples may exist, period. I love using more periods. <laughs> period. Yeah, I, yeah period. <laughs> I, 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 actually, I actually find that there's a, there's a stage in people's writing where they try to use as complicated in, inverted sentences as possible. And... And it's a kind of a statement that I, I'm now smart enough to make long sentences that I can't understand. Um, it's that God, you know, immovable rock wisdom part. And uh, years ago, I was I was exposed probably Chicago style as well to what was called Nortel English. Uh, um, and Nortel English was supposed to be machine translatable in the 19 early <laughs> 1990s to all languages so that the manuals wouldn't have to be rewritten all the time. And essentially, it's always noun, verb, object. It's just, it's <laughs> never any other style. It's always that way. <laughs> and it reads like you're in grade two, and that's okay. <laughs> so, so on I, this one, uh, I, I like Thomas's changes because the word even appeared twice, separated by three words in between. And so even, even, um, the new wording I liked better than the even, even. Okay. And are you happy with and so on? 
Hank, I don't know if how to I don't know how to read this. Plus one, you're Sweet happy with it. The, 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 the text contained and so on. This is gone now. That is a plus one. And so uh, on. I mean, how, why, no. Michael, I would insert the Oxford comma, but other than that, it's fine. What's that one? Oh, there's after memory. Yeah. So there is a case you can look up in uh, the state of Maine where the absence of an officer comma yep. <laughs> resulted in um, people getting uh, milk delivery men getting overtime on uh, statutory holidays. And, and, then they, the, and then they changed the law to make it again such that they don't get overtime. <laughs> they fixed the law. But anyway went to the US went to the circuit court or something like this. Anyway, the device So I like Hank's edition. I agree. Illustrated. Reload. Come on, reload. Uh there we go. Okay, illustrated. Only a bootlegger will interact, and therefore, these claims, the relevant claims, are there irrelevant claims? I think it's there could be other claims that are not relevant to the bootloader. Is that's I think the point, right? But these work work for me too. I don't really care. Yeah, I'm, I I I will not die on this. But uh, it's, it's, it's a more a bit more precision on you know generic these, uh, which were in fact those related to the. But um, yeah. can you expand the intermediate the little blue thing because I want to see the word claims in the what is referring to. Uh, okay, so the word claims does not appear in that paragraph. And so when it talks about uh, these claims, what is these referring to? I think that was what Thomas yeah, was Yeah, I think that's first. the issue. Okay. Attesting the read only boss and have to ensure the integrity of the bootloader. Maybe at some point a previous version of the text had some text, something there that was referred back to. So certainly we have to fix that anyway. Hank, are you okay with the fact that we yeah, If we want to be precise, we have to say, therefore, claims about boot integrity have to be measured securely. I uh, would right. just reiterate content, and then it's good. Because relevant doesn't really improve the issue, I think. I put, uh, stating the actual uh, subject here does. So claims about boot integrity would uh, satisfy my uh, concerns. Relating to the bootloader or boot integrity? Uh, whatever you want to have. Yeah. Um. <laughs> he said, so this backing what, up again. Well, if you look what at what you would want to say, line 424 uses the phrase the integrity of the bootloader. Yep. So if you say claims relating to the integrity of the bootloader, would yeah, be, that's what I, I, I think, what these claims was referring to. Integrity of the bootloader. Yeah, but it's maybe more than that. Is the is the claim related to the secure, to the measure boot the the whole the whole measuring chain here? Well, this is not evidence. Remember, these are claims, so it has a broader statement than just evidence than just the measurements. That's I think like we didn't define claim. I mean, claims the, is very, is intended to be a bit nebulous because it apply it refers to many things. I mean, in secure boot, when you have multiple layers, right, from, you know, BIOS and bootloader and OS or, you know, Enclave after that, if you get a TE or whatever, the same statement is true with each step, right? But I think this paragraph is about the bootloader, right? The integrity of the bootloader, not the integrity of subsequent <clears throat> stages. Okay. Okay. I think if you look at the next sentence right below this, line 428, and it talks about at this, cycle. at this stage of the boot cycle, right? Okay. Can't compose them into evidence because we don't have a place where we can sign the evidence yet. Is that really the, the statement? 
Uh, the measure we've done the measurement we've stored it into a tpm perhaps but uh, but we can't turn it into evidence because that's going to happen later where the tpm collects the rest of it together or something like that for instance i'd have to look at more context so i don't know okay i think it's it, yes uh, mike is is that the there's no attesting environment yet because it's not been started mm -hmm. well here the, the, the the BIOS is the testing environment for the bootloader in this paragraph, and then the bootloader is the testing environment for the thing that it loads. And the evidence is is, is all that stuff put together, right? And so you might, yeah. it, and my answer might be, you can't compose it into evidence because evidence is more than just one stage, right? Yeah, that's the that's the point yeah, okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to relate, but I said it poorly. Yeah. So, so there is some ambiguity here because we don't want to overwhelm everybody with the hard facts, which is that you have multiple routes of trust, one for the measurement that started yep. outside of the testing environment, and that is extended here without being having a testing environment being in charge of that. So it's so it has to be a secure method until you get the route of trust for reporting, yada, yada. And we don't want to say all of that. So this is a simplification, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Okay, so Hank is happy. What about this bus connected? You're happy with that? I'm happy with that. Sure. Uh, the scope of this document is scenarios. This document covers scenarios. Uh, Are everybody good? Um, I don't care. <laughs> according to rules that it controls, according to some predefined rules. Uh oh. my doorbell rang we'll see what happens if my child knows how to answer the door or not <laughs> got his black belt on the weekend big deal um you know i i'm i think there's a, a definite difference between rules that it controls and according to some predefined rules which section are we uh, in now is this at the end in security considerations? Or is this at the beginning in? Relying party. Okay, this is the definition of the the relying party uh, role. Okay. Meaning this is about the relying party role is, about... is okay to be more verbose than one of their sections. Yeah. Okay. And then we have this other, this is entering personal identifiable information. The verifier might share this information with other authorized parties. According to rule, it controls. It doesn't seem correct, right? It, it's not a verifier that controls the rules uh, that define the way in which PII are. Well, it, 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 the verifier follows some rules and it, 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 it I mean. So I, I'm yeah. okay with Hank's phrasing, although. Uh, if, uh, you can see Hank's suggestion at the bottom. Um, PII is taken as an acronym where it's not in the parenthesized oh. form after it appears like four lines before. And so his is fine if we had the parentheses PII after that, after 828. So we have or, or expanding it in the middle of Hank's. So whichever, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, actually, I assumed somehow this was already introduced, but apparently it wasn't. So I'm sorry. Well, I, I, I you know, I actually think that. I, I, um, it's some people just call it PII without knowing what it stands for. So I think you're having both is good. Well, well, yeah, and I also think that sometimes if you haven't spoken about something for a while, it's useful to repeat the the definition, so that because not everyone like like the first time I saw PII, I went what the, and I had no idea what it meant. Um, so uh, if you haven't been working in that field, I would say that it, it it's a surprising thing for many people so are you okay with this then this point i don't know if my suggestion really got in i don't know if it did i'm going to be here refresh just to check but yeah okay now it's there oh it's there okay Um, 
why are the rules predefined? Yeah, let's get to there. Because okay. the verifier has to have uh, knowledge enough to deal with it at runtime. I think that's the only meaning of predefined, meaning before it needs to know. Why not just say something like governing policy? That sounds better to me. Because you could pre you could predefine the rules it, but... a microsecond before, right? That's yeah. That's the, and the, but that's not the spirit of predefined. And predefined is usually <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Governing sounds fine. Okay. Okay. So you want to change that again? Um, to... I actually didn't. You already merge in Hanks and it hasn't refreshed. So you may have to refresh before you modify something. Otherwise, you'll hit a conflict. Yeah, you're right. Now, now you can modify it. Three two finds there's the address the handling of PII. Here we go. Yes, is that that are I mean, so the suggestion was just change the words predefined rules to governing policy was the suggestion on the table. Yeah, it, if you just say PII, that's too limiting. There might be some other um, factor that that impacts the, the policy that would control sharing. Such as well, but uh, the, we're the specifically start, uh, talking yeah. about PII here. Right. There could be other no, we are, reasons we are to about, not disclose. Disclose. No, we're talking but PII. We're, say, go ahead, Tink. We are talking about uh, sensitive information such as PII. So it's an example, and and I think that's correct. So if if we're going back to this, it's also uh -huh. an example in the final sentence. Ah, okay. So Hank, your point is PII is an example because it's a such as an eight twenty eight, and so. Uh, we yeah. could also say to address the handling of sensitive information and not use the term PII. Exactly. I didn't right. see so, that, and that's right. a very good point. So, so then, uh, Michael, I would revert your change to 829 to remove parentheses PII and change just PII in here to say sensitive information in the edit that you're doing right now. So first of all, I'm here. So this is going to say handling of sensitive information? You can still keep all the parentheses part, parenthesized part. Yeah, sensitive information, so it matches the phrase in 828. Okay. Now that you've done that, we no longer need to add the parentheses PII back in 829. I don't mind leaving that. I, I, I don't care either way, so. I, I, I like this for two reasons. Okay. One is that if someone searches the document for PII, because they mm -hmm. want to know how we're dealing with it. You know, uh, it's it's Alyssa Cooper comes along and wants to know if we dealt with this and just going <laughs> to search for that point. Yeah. It's going to find that. It's going to be there. And it's going to say something useful about it. So I'd rather leave that both there okay. for now. Hey, Mike, it's already in the, in the privacy consideration section, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, 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 I still don't mind because of the search point. Okay. Someone searches for PII. I don't I mind. And as I said... That term is not that term is not well understood among every group of people. People who know it know it well, and the people who don't know it don't know it at all. Is what I would say. Uh, so I, I think that PII is too limiting. I mean, there's lots of times you wouldn't want information to be shared because okay, you, it so helps we, you fingerprint the, the machine. Yeah, so that's what we changed to sensitive information. So we did change this but, part here. It says sensitive information now. PI is such as PII, but it's not the only case. Does that make sense, Tom, uh, Peter? Well, I mean, does it actually say it's not the only case? I mean, it, it implies that it is, but you know, such I think as it, yeah, such yeah, as. Uh, so I, I think I would like it better if you uh, uh, it, it take a, add something that's not personal because it's, system identification is an issue as well. Right, because if you're an attacker and you can get access to something that the verifier is sharing, and so from a policy point of view, you might want to specify that that is not identifying so information you, about the system. You, you would like us to say, PII. you would like us to say, such as personally identifiable information, or, and then you want to identifying information or something along the line, because I, I think that's that's really an issue as well. I mean, lots of systems don't deal with PII, but you don't want the verifier sharing information about an attestation. So I'm, I'm very happy with the idea that there's a governing policy um, setting whether you can or cannot do that. Um, but I think it should work? be clear that it's way more. You don't need the comment, Michael. 
You don't need the combo when there's only two. I don't think. I mean, I think it's short enough think. that you don't hope we don't need the combo. The it's other not. is not, the, not appropriate because PII is not system identifiable information. Uh, there are many people that feel differently, but I don't mind writing what you say. Um, PII can be in system identifiable, start to become synonymous when you start to have personal devices like a Fitbit or something. Yeah. But it's okay to remove it. And the, but the sensitive information here is more than just um, identity kind of things. It could also be things that are used to um, attack the system, like exactly. So, right. so which patch set is present, present or absent? System, for instance, would be yeah. a example of sensitive information that shouldn't be shared. Yeah, if you can figure out that's exactly why, which patch set is the there, comment. then you can look for which things are not fixed in that patch set. Yeah. So that's why I put the comma in there because I figured there was going to be something else in there. So, what? How would you like to phrase that? The the patch version. The I, that's just the, an example of system identifiable information. I don't think you need to call that out unless somebody else. Wants. I agree. Yeah, that's what I heard is that people wanted to call that out. No, I, I brought it up as an example of system identifiable information. It's not PII. It's just sensitive information. I'm explaining why I think it could be sensitive in some contexts. Is there some other wording that someone would like to put in here? Is that good enough for you, Peter? Uh, yeah, that's fine. I think it okay. certainly uh, captures my, my point. Okay. Refresh. Do, do. Okay, a governing policy that addresses the handling of sensitive information, potentially included in appraisal policies for evidence. Okay, going on, we have, in some cases where evidence contains sensitive information. When evidence contains sensitive in a tester. Okay. I'm okay with that is the first phrase up to the comma. What's the rest? <laughs> I got to read people's comments here. Uh, can I close that somehow without resolving it? I don't see a way to collapse it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Collapse it. Um, okay, sorry. Well, I'll go down and if you want me to go back up again, maybe I can just slide it onto there. Your only other choice is to reduce the font size. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, I can just make yeah. the window bigger and then the font size will be smaller on your screen. Mm -hmm. I think that's a reasonable rewrite. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the picking here, so uh, uh, I'm fine. Okay, I've read all the oh, green. Yeah. The green looks fine. Can you scroll up so I can read the red one more time just to make sure it's not a point that's not captured? Okay, yeah, I, I'm fine with the green text. Hank, you had a comment here, but I'm not sure if your comment was positive or negative. So the <laughs> first sentence says that, again, changes the meaning. Yeah, I mean, it was not the, the initial intent of the text. I don't know what the text said before is not saying it anymore. That's the only thing I highlight in the first sentence. And the sensitive stuff is just the picking. So they can ignore that, basically. But um, but uh, it, before it said sometimes this happens, and not yeah. at all. And now so, it says always. It's a difference. Typically requires, yeah. Yeah, this so, is, was, was, uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, sorry. Um, and I retract my comment. Uh, Thomas fixed that. Yeah. Well, before it was actually doubly um, uh, hand wavy because it said in some cases it might. Right, and so yeah. it was already caveated with in some cases, and then might after that, and so you didn't need both of those, and so it replaced both of those with typically, which I think is okay. This is fine. Well, I would say the other thing is instead of typically, we could put may. Well, it still has the might at the end of at the end of the line eight thirty six, right? And might even and might, yeah. All right. So that's Are why I'm fine on? with it. All right, I'm fine too. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so resolve. Uh, grammar. Yeah. Okay. Agree. Mm. 
Um, I had to go back and reread the definition of attestation results, um, but I think uh, Thomas's phrasing is okay. I don't understand the difference yet between Thomas's and Hank's. Meaning, I understand the difference in the words. I don't know if there's a difference in meaning that Hank had in mind. I think this has to be a Boolean value, single, singular. Well, I think I understand Hank did it because attestation results is plural. Oh. And so you could yeah. say an attestation result. But, but yeah, that's actually the first complaint that I had with Hank's. And I went back and said, okay, I see why he did that. But given that you just had exactly the same reaction as I did, um, that means okay. that's probably confusing to keep it plural. I notice. Um, I think it should be said via a, a boleyn value. Well, that's what uh, Thomas did. Yeah, a vote boleyn value. And so the difference is that Thomas used carry, and Hank may had uh, be expressed via. In the end, I would be okay with carry. So that's uh, the 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 problem I had was well, exactly actually like we're, we're okay with expressed. It's the it's the pluralization of boolean uh, or values that's bothering us. I understand that. I just I don't know if there's this, if there's a meaning difference between carry and be expressed by. I think the the b to carry change is fine because if we go back to the attestation results, it's a something like a signed set of uh, you know claims, right? And so. Uh, be a Boolean means it's just a set of claims, or it's just a claim, right? It, it doesn't talk about the signed part. And so I think it's correct uh, to change the B to carry, because that's to cut to say so what well, I try a signature to do part here, two. So what I try to do here is because we have two, we are comparing two things, and yeah. two things now start with via. It's IA Boolean values or richer things, and or via. So that's, that's the repetitiveness shows the two things easier to a reader. Uh, that's the only thing I did here, effectively. The, 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 the important point about a Boolean value is that it really could just be one claim that is a Boolean value that says, yes, attestation was, was a success. That was the point of that. Uh, yeah. I find it, 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 could, it, it could be, I, I think Boolean values is correct. So think about the, the trust vectors kind of idea. What, what, you're, what you're getting is a vector of Boolean values. Um, and there are plenty of scenarios that also want to have uh, evidence that are, are, are that have been expressed or retained in, in richer claims. So I know of at least one system that was interested in keeping history of things, and they wanted more than just it passed at this time. They wanted to know specific things about uh, the history of that system. Well, that's already so, accommodated by that richer set of claims in the yes. right. So I'm, I'm saying that, that that I think you need both ideas. That uh, the, the results there. may. Yeah. Right, so I, I I I thought I heard some suggestions to get rid of that. No, right, so thing, talking about whether or not the end of the spiral, right, one end of the spectrum is whether there's only one boolean value, the other end of the spectrum so is whether there's a whole bunch many. of information. How, how about right, change so it to, I, to simply pass or fail? Um, mm. I don't like that as much as the Thomas is phrasing. Right now, the the I think. Right now, I like Thomas's phrasing better than the other ones. I understand Hank's via on objections to the via part, but I like Thomas's phrasing on the uh, a boolean value and uh, richer. So I like those. This is how I would write it: a boolean yeah, value. Okay, okay. Yeah. that's the simple thing. Or a richer set yes. of claims, right? Which then could be many boolean values or whatever. But the important part is that it's except it's. Our architecture accepts the possibility that it's you just get a yes or no. So the more I think about this, the more I like carry better than via. For the same reason as I like carry better than B. And the, the, yes to your wording, Michael, I'm fine with your wording. I'm just back to the word via, but otherwise, maybe not, maybe may carry. Nah, be carried means something uh, encapsulates the attestation or so. Otherwise, other way around it. Taps, okay. They carry or include, I think, is the term used in the definition, which is synonymous with carry. You could use the word include, but uh, but carry, I think, is fine. Sorry, do you want carry, me to put or include? Or, or no, no, would, no. Uh, no. Uh, but now the second carry, I think, it's in the second via, I think Hank's point was he wanted to match the word, and so or may carry. Uh, I don't know if that helps uh, Hank with wanting them to match the readability. 
Via to me sounds much closer to B. And the point is the attestation results is defined as the signed part of the claims, not just the claims itself. Just a set of claims is not a station result. I'm, set of claims I'm, is I'm okay with both. Carry is uh, as long as it's comparable and it's this now and single, that's fine. I'm good with it. All right. So I'm going to just. Yep. It sounds put fine. It in the list. Okay. I hate all these little. Little commits that all say the same thing because we don't put something better in it. Okay, chip with a comma. That sounds wonderful. Another comma inserted. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Stay, go back to the comma insertion for a second. Um, ah, okay. Um, that comma, okay. Yeah, we need another comma. Stop it. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's going to be a conflict anyway. That's what we just merged. That was the the, the Ned change that I did, the, the Ned issue that I changed. All right. Oh, all so right. you'll hit a merge conflict on 1169. Right. So actually, if you delete the comma change here, you can probably make this go through without the merge conflict. It was unchanged, and it won't touch the text the other one touched, and it will just merge. Oh, that okay. comma was the... I, I, I know what you're saying. I'm just trying to think about this. It is into the first line under chip, after chip. Chip here. Yeah. Not that the change isn't correct, just that it's already merged into master. So. Uh, I don't think it'll matter. I think we'll get a conflict because uh, the underlying change is there. We'll I don't. See. Okay, we'll find. We'll, we'll, we'll find see. out. Okay. Uh, okay. So then we have another comma inserted here. Um, I, I did that in my suggested change. Sorry, you can see he added reference values. Hank yeah. said nice catch. I added a comma after reference values. Okay. Good. And Thomas no Why? longer thanks himself. Why do you no longer thank yourself, Thomas? Because uh, uh, because there's another instance of my name somewhere else. So oh, because I put you in the uh, I put you in the uh, the. Um, Did you uh, get double the, thanks? Yeah, he got double thanks maybe because I <laughs> I'm trying to use the acknowledgement uh, oh, okay. mechanism. Uh, like there's a you can it it it, I see. it puts it in it acknowledges you in an XML way that's trait that's better eat more easily uh, tracked. Gotcha. Uh, okay. There. So, okay, so let me see here. So to do this now, I'm probably- You first have to commit the changes you just added the batch. Where's the commit changes button? Commit suggestions. Yeah, you're right, the diff is outdated. we have to put them back into the yeah wait 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 that, that wasn't the only one <laughs> add suggestion to batch yep and you had one more someplace because there was three before yeah, three, batch. Yeah. okay now you're good I, ha I have to go by the way a minute or two before the top of the hour Not that you can't continue without me. Um, would people be, be okay with having uh, one or two issues and has conflicts with the base branch? No conflicts. You can merge. Oh, no conflicts. Oh, That's right. Now that you remove it. that comment, it says you can merge. You think I have no comments. All right. Well, uh, don't always believe you, but there we go. <laughs> okay, so uh, 55 open issues. So what I would like is... So I know, Michael, you're going to drop off uh, momentarily. Um, I'm actually started on vacation starting now, so I want to make sure... Uh, can we not meet for the rest of the month, even though we yeah. got lots of issues? Yes. Okay. Even vacation time, is that okay with people? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I will just had to ask before you drop. Delete. So <laughs> yeah, delete next week. 
Um, Thomas, how many of the ones that we just merged are covered in these issues here? Because I don't think it had a you know a fixes comment. So are, are there any of these that should now be closed? None. None. Okay. Okay. So so Dave, uh, on that topic, so January fifth. January 5th, we're going to continue again, is what I hear you're saying. Um, I think it's okay. I, I, I may still be on vacation that day, but it's close enough. So, yeah. Okay. I, mean, I don't know if I'm going to be on vacation that day. It depends on which day I start back, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday that week. Uh, I guess that's somebody's system responding to my email, maybe. Um uh, so what I would like to do is I would like to throw one or two issues at everyone on the call who's willing uh, or have you take them. Um, Sounds good. I can nominate the issues. You can pick them. What I guess what I would like to do, I would rather if you work on an issue you care about. So I would rather you grab the issues you care about. So what I propose is that I'm just going to throw an issue at or two at I know who's on the call today, uh, like later on today, if I haven't seen you grab an issue. Does that seem fair? So what I want you to do is basically to read it, understand it enough. One of the options you may say is I don't I don't agree with this this point. I don't think we should do anything um, or. or Ideally, you would produce a pull request, but um, I would understand if that is more than some people can do uh, and or just throw text that you think belongs into the issue and will turn into a pull request as a group. Uh, or minimally, at least add your own comments into the issue itself, because I know, uh, Peter, you had an issue with being able to generate pull requests, but I understand you can generate comments and issues, right? Yeah, that's what I meant, is that if you can't actually generate a pull request, then say, well, I think the text should maybe say something like this, right? Or you agree with the point, but it needs to be wordsmithed. Or no, you're missing an important point here. You need to you need to cover you know X, Y, or Z. Or it's stupid, uh -huh. and we should just won't fix it. Yeah. A lot of my problems have to do with uh, writing written uh, uh, comments uh, as opposed to verbal. Comments. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so, it, it, so uh, Peter, uh, if you want to simply make a note to yourself and tell us the comment at the next call, <laughs> that would also work, right, I well, guess. Yeah, if right? you can do that, I mean, uh, sure. I, I think I'm going to be unavailable mostly until January, but uh, uh, if I'm, uh, I will try. Sure. Yeah, I'm not planning on doing anything before uh, the, like January 3rd, so. Okay. okay. Even then, it might be January, uh, 4th, I, January I will, 5th. Uh, if, if, I, if I get an issue, I will do my best to... Uh, Make sure comments get back to someone who can make them. Um, so, so it also sounds to me like, based upon the pace that we're going at, that it's going to take us about four meetings to get through these, um, and so that means most of January. Is that that seem okay? Um, I, I think that probably half of these issues are probably, man, you know, that's a nice point, but what are we going to do about it, right? Yeah. Um, and that's okay. We don't have to respond to every single thing that's said out there. Yeah, because keep in mind that some of these uh, issues could be addressed with an email response. And yeah, so yeah. The one, and we're using the won't fix label for the ones we've already agreed are in that category. And, and there are also some things that we may have already fixed. Not that the filing was wrong, but it may have been filing just as a question or something like that. Does it really mean this? And if the answer is yes, right, there's no reason to change the text. The answer is just to respond in email. So won't. So there were four or five of the does it really mean this that I actually didn't even turn into an issue. Yeah. Um, but OK, yeah, totally. So please, if you can, grab a couple of issues that look interesting to you. And uh, I'm going to go and throw a bunch at people. And if you don't have a guess, I guess the one one solution is if you don't have a GitHub login, then I won't know how to do it and I won't be able to give you an issue. But um, uh, we, How do we grab? Oh, so you could go in, you could pick this, and then you could click on this button, assign to yourself. Uh, I don't seem to have that button. Okay. They have to be marked in this organization as a contributor or... or I'm surprised Lawrence is not, but um, okay. Like, because I thought that I... Yeah, it's there. Lawrence it's a, yeah, it's right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll you'll, you, you, can, you can also just type... 
You can also probably type here, Lawrence, to assign it to yourself, and then I'll know it's assigned to you if I can't click on that button. Okay. Okay. All right, fair enough. Uh, I'm going to drop off and go to this other call, and um, I'll talk um, Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah and all those other things to you guys, and thanks for a really good year of really hard work. Yep. Thank Great. you, Mike. Talk to you later. Hey, thanks. Bye. 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 Twice. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye.